So it's, uh, it's time to get busy. Um, the first task to building the base will be to uh, sink a, uh, the main vertical shaft that will serve as a primary access point for uh, each level. And unfortunately, before we can actually get to that, we need to do some uh, work to keep me alive and relatively kicking because uh, at the moment I am as defenseless as a snail out of its shell and uh, even angering a, a couple bees may result in my untimely demise. So uh, I need to set up some basic support. And that means I need to build some shelter, um, start generating some food, and set up some storage to handle the initial building phase, or I will be buried up to my eyeballs in dirt, cobblestone, or whatever else I find. Um, therefore, that will be the focus of this episode. Before I jump into the nitty gritty though, uh, let's talk a moment about the world I selected and why I chose it. Now, I spent some time going through a number of possible seeds, uh, 42 to be exact, and I ultimately settled on seed number 41. Now I was looking for a seed that placed me in a forest or a plains biome that was reasonably flat, not too close to a village, pillager outpost, or other structure. Uh, access to shopping, good schools, mass transit, and low property taxes were also important, but this is Minecraft, so they did not play much of a role in the decision making. In addition, I plan on building from the center of the world map. So I was also trying to find a seed where that location was not in the middle of a deep ocean or on the side of a steep cliff. And uh, you'd be surprised how often that seems to be the case. I was also looking for a seed where the center of the map would kind of support my plan to build something along the lines of an uh, English manor house. Um, in other words, calm, peaceful, idyllic, you know, boring. But boring is good when you're running around in your pajamas with nothing to defend yourself. So uh, I had found a couple of seeds where I loved the topography, but uh, the center of an exotic or troublesome biome would kind of conflict with what I had in mind. Uh, but I found one, and I'll move forward with it. For those of you playing in the home audience, the seed is uh, minus 434100390763456. Uh, don't worry, I will make sure to post that seed in the notes below. Now this puts the map center in the middle of an old growth birch biome, which is nestled within a small and shallow little valley uh, with relatively easy access to water. And this is where we will start. Now if you've played a sandbox or survival game before, uh, you're probably pretty familiar with the idea that a large part of the game uh, involves building stuff, only to tear it down a little later to replace it with a bigger, better, or more permanent design. Now it happens all the time and it's especially true of the first few iterations of uh, shelter, storage, and uh, crafting facilities. However, it can also be a major pain in the butt to have all your temporary storage right in the middle of the space you need to build your new farm. Therefore, it's been my experience that a little effort and foresight can dramatically reduce the pain that comes from this. And since my base actually has a pretty extensive plan from the very beginning, it's a little easier to figure out where I can place things up front to minimize the hassle or replace it or moving them later on. At least this is how I rationalize my compulsive disorder and justify the resulting behavior. So please bear with me. So uh, after I get some wood, I'll find the center of the map and I'll sink a shallow shaft straight down, uh, dig out a few of the modules as shown on my design. I won't fully complete them, but I will clear out the full space that I will eventually flesh out. Uh, I will use one module for basic living space and materials processing, and I'll use another one for storage. And the third one will be reserved for chicken farming. Now, if I uh, have access to other livestock, I might carve out spaces for them as well. While I'm working on that, I will also spend some time on the surface to find some chickens to put in that space. Uh, should I find any seeds, I will plant them on the surface in the same grid pattern as uh, the base design. Is that necessary? No. But it soothes my OCD, and like I said before, it eases the pain and effort when it comes time to move them later on. As I wander around on the surface, I'll be on the lookout for some key materials early on. Uh, string and wool are probably the, the two at the top of the list. I need string to make bows and fishing poles, and uh, fishing is a fantastic way to find goodies in general and to generate protein early on, especially before I get a chicken or beef farm going. Uh, wool is necessary for making a bed, of course, and if I don't get a bed within a few days, I'll be forced to only venture out during the day or else uh, spend my nights on the surface getting dive bombed by the phantoms. Now this is a little easier to accomplish with my ad hoc mod pack as the uh, supplementaries mod brings flax and flax seeds to the game. Now wild flax can often be found near water and when harvested it'll provide flax seeds which can then be farmed. 
Fully grown flax uh, plants grown on a farm can be harvested for more seeds and flax plants, which can then be processed in the string, which in turn can then be processed in the wool. Uh, in addition, wandering around and looking for flax may reveal some uh, other wild plants that can be farmed, including uh, onions, cabbage, tomatoes, and uh, salmon berries. All of those come from the farmer's delight and delightful mods, uh, as well as most of the vanilla favorites, including potatoes, carrots, and beets. Uh, the, the mods seem to create a startling number of uh, points of interest, so I wouldn't be surprised if I find a Starbucks or a convenience store as well. As I go on walkabout, uh, I will also keep an eye open for bamboo for making scaffolding. Uh, it is one of the most important and useful tools for a builder. Uh, unfortunately, we're playing with large biomes, so I'll need to cover a lot more real estate before I find the necessary biome. Uh, and so until I get some armor and comfortable walking shoes, uh, I might have to live without scaffolding for a while, uh, maybe a very long while. But that's okay, because uh, back in the day, I always carried around a stack of dirt for pretty much the same purpose, and that still works. I will also start some tree farming. Uh, I'm not one to clear cut a forest for materials, and I firmly believe in replacing the trees that I do harvest. Also, as a uh, builder, I like to have access to as many different materials as I can, so I tend to grow a few of every different kind of tree uh, that I can find, and then stockpile the wood. I prefer some types of wood for building, and others I like to use for things like charcoal, chests, sticks, and uh, similar rolls, where the specific type of wood is irrelevant. Okay, so the, uh, the goals for this episode is to uh, build a shelter that has a living space and at least some workshop space and uh, has a decent amount of temporary storage and is able to house at least chickens. Uh, I also need to get some agriculture going, so I need to get uh, at least wheat going. That's the easiest one to start, obviously. Just go bashing grass until you get some seeds. And uh, bonus points for uh, finding and starting flax and pumpkin agriculture. And here we are in the new world. Uh, I can see right away that we're a bit higher in elevation uh, above sea level than I originally figured. So I think I'll need to go back and alter the uh, current design by adding a couple levels. Uh, though, to be honest, I kind of felt that there was not enough agricultural uh, capacity in the old design, so I will probably devote the new levels to agriculture. There's uh, obviously plenty of wood, and if I decide to go with uh, recessed lighting in, in the base, uh, these uh, birch trapdoors are my favorite cover for uh, light sources, uh, which are usually jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, unfortunately, the site is uh, situated in such a way that I'll have to start terraforming much earlier than I normally would prefer, uh, but I think the results will be worth it in the long run. A little to the west, I found a, a wide entrance to a large and very deep uh, cave system. I suspect that we will uh, encounter that same cave system as we dig down to the bedrock layer. That of course will present some challenges, but of course it can bring some opportunities as well. Uh, I also visited four out of the five nearby villages. Uh, the four villages in the west are interesting in that they're all uh, separate and distinct from each other, but they're uh, pretty close together. Uh, the first village is just a plain vanilla style village, and uh, it is unfortunately split by a waterway, and there's some vertical challenges within the village itself. Uh, this will take considerable renovation to fix. Uh, due west of that is a, uh, another village that clearly comes from one of the mods. Uh, I call it a Santorini style village as the, uh, the bright white walls and the red tile roofs remind me of the picturesque little uh, towns and villages scattered throughout the Greek islands. You could, uh, you could almost smell the roasting lamb and hear the bazooki music in the background. And uh, strangely enough, uh, the moment I just said that, I got hungry all of a sudden. Uh, a little further west and, and, and south is a very interesting village. Uh, it too must come from one of the mods. It has a, uh, a small stone keep and a number of fairly large uh, village buildings clustered around the keep. I love these kinds of villages. I especially like uh, the detailed greenhouses uh, that can be found there. And uh, as I wandered around the village taking in the sights, I, uh, I did notice several segments of scaffolding were tucked away here and there. So I just may go back there to gather those uh, to at least partially fill my scaffolding need until I find a source of uh, bamboo. Now uh, a short ways north of the uh, 
these other three villages, there's a fourth village that climbs up the side of a mountain. Now it appears to be a plain vanilla village or some variant of a plain vanilla village. And there's nothing particularly special about this village except the location is uh, very good. And it's given me some ideas about what to do with the four villages uh, collectively. I'm seriously considering the idea of supersizing my usual village expansion efforts. Uh, in other words, instead of reworking each of these villages individually, uh, I would work at creating a full-blown town or even a small city by expanding the four villages into each other. Uh, so if I go that route, and if I stick with my idea of a steampunkish uh, world based on Britain or Europe in the uh, Victorian or Edwardian era, then maybe I would build uh, an old medieval town, right? There would be a, a keep somewhere, probably uh, on the mountaintop, with an old town section that nestles up to or surrounds the old keep. And then uh, I would build old town walls that would enclose that portion uh, of the settlement. And then newer buildings based on uh, 18th and 19th century designs would uh, go around uh, the settlement outside the walls. That would actually be a, a fairly realistic uh, model as castles would get built to establish a strong military presence in an area and then the locals would then uh, build near or around the castle for protection and for uh, the business opportunities that come from supporting the local garrison. Uh, eventually the town would grow prosperous enough that it would uh, expand and then could build its, uh, its own wall, outer wall to protect itself. Uh, then the technology progressed and the use of the walls was no longer viable because uh, increasingly powerful uh, explosive weapons could easily fire over or sometimes through the walls and it would be uh, too much of a hassle to tear them down so the town just continued expanding outside the walls uh, but of course architectural styles come and go and so the building styles would reflect the age of each neighborhood and with uh, older styles toward the center and newer buildings toward the edge uh, almost like the growth rings of a tree. Uh, also, while I had planned uh, an underground railroad system uh, all along, I think I will also build a surface railroad system as well. Uh, typically, railroad stations do not sit on private estates, but they do run to nearby settlements, and so the, the larger town or city uh, model that I just described would make a uh, perfect terminus for our surface railway system. And uh, I think that finishes today's effort. Looking back at the goals that I set for this episode, uh, I was able to build a shelter, and that includes living and working space. Uh, it has ample storage for now, and it is housing a growing population of chickens and cows. Uh, it also smells real bad down there. Uh, while we're at it, we did get quite a bit of agriculture going, including my priority crops of wheat, flax, and pumpkins. Uh, we also found potatoes, tomatoes, onions, beets, carrots, and melons. Uh, we have the <laughs> uh, we have the seed for a strong agricultural base, and that means we've completed all my original goals for this episode. I am genuinely uh, excited at the prospects ahead of us, and I hope you're becoming more interested as well. So uh, until next time, cheers. <laughs>